Go ahead. Okay, so x minus 4 is a factor of f of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus 12x minus 16. Okay. The first thing to notice is, is that we have every degree of x represented. We have an x cubed, squared, x, and no x. So we don't have to use any dummy variables. If we were missing, say, this 12x term, then we'd have to put a 0x in there. Okay. Okay. Now, when you do synthetic division, what am I going to divide by here? Um, Negative 4 or 4? Four? 4. Correct. In other words, the answer. In other words, if I solve that problem right there, I get x equal 4. That's what goes in the box. What goes across the top? Um, Just the coefficients of everything. Okay. So 3 minus 8. minus 12, and minus 16. Now, what's the next step? Um, do you add 4? very first step is to bring that first term all the way down. Okay. Okay. Now, it's multiplication and adding. If I was doing long division, it would be dividing and subtracting. So what synthetic division does is it lets you turn division and subtraction into addition and multiplication. So the next step is you multiply those two together, put the answer there, add, I'll multiply those two together, put the answer there, add, multiply those two together, put the answer there, add. If x minus 4 is a factor of f of x, then this must come out to be 0. You have to have a 0 remainder. That's called the 0 remainder theorem. In other words, if I didn't get a zero there, then I would have said x minus 4 is not a factor of that. So what's the other factor? I know x minus 4 is 1. What's the second one now? Um, so whatever that is. Uh, 3? 3x squared. In other words, what we've done is we've knocked that x cubed down by 1. Yeah. There's the answer. Okay. Okay. Got another one? Um, no, I only have one of those. I have dividing complex numbers now. Okay. Okay, so 1 plus 3i divided by 4 minus 2i. This looks like a division problem, but it's not really. Okay. If I go over here and I say, what is that? Is that a division problem? Um, no. Nah, you're not really. You're not going to really divide square root of 2 into 1. What you're going to do is rationalize it, right? 
In other words, you're going to multiply the top by square root of 2 and the bottom by square root of 2, which gives you square root of 2 over 2, and that's the answer. So what looks to be a division problem isn't really. Same thing with complex numbers. The only thing I'm doing, I'm not going to divide this denominator into that numerator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Top and bottom. In other words, I'm multiplying that fraction by the number 1. There's my number 1 right there. What's going to happen is the imaginary number is going to go away in the bottom. Multiply the bottom first and tell me what you get. Um, Got to foil it. So, let's do it turn by turn. Minus 16. No, 4 times 4 is plus 16. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Um, 16. Um, would it be 8i? Plus 8i. Plus 8i. And then, um, minus 8i. Um, minus 4i squared. Now, because we multiplied by the conjugate, these two terms will always cancel one another out, no matter what it is we're doing. And what is i squared equal to? Minus 1. So minus 4 times i squared is what? Positive 4. Correct. 16 plus 4 is 20. There is our new denominator. Now, let's figure out what the numerator is. I've got to multiply these two complex numbers. Same thing, foil it. Same thing. Okay. Um, so, 4 um, plus 2i, and then plus 12i um, plus 6i squared. Okay, so we've got a total of 14i, so we'll put that there. And what's our total numbers between that and that? Would it be minus 2? Uh -huh. So it's minus 2 plus 14i all over 20. Can I do anything more? Could you simplify? I can. I can divide the word. They're all even numbers. So at the worst case scenario is I can divide everything by 2. Yeah. Which gives you... Minus 1 plus 17i divided by 10. Plus 7i. Oh, 7i. Seven, seven, seven okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with that answer. But usually when you're talking complex numbers, they want the answer in this format, A plus BI. And that's not in that format. How do I put that in that format? Um, would you have? Separated two. into two fractions. There's one oh. fraction. There's the other fraction. So the answer becomes minus one-tenth, that's A, plus seven-tenths, that's B, times I. So this answer, that is the more formal format, is to put it into the A plus B I. If I'm going to graph a complex number, it's just like the XY scale, except this is the real, this is the imaginary, and to plot this number, I would go to minus one-tenth on the real and up seven-tenths on the imaginary. So that would be your graph point. 
So that's the reason they want you to put it in A plus BI format. But I don't know if your teacher has even talked to you about that or whether she, she, he or she wants you to do that or not. Okay. So I'm just making you aware that if you get instructions, put your answer in A plus BI format, then you have to separate this into two fractions like I did. Um, and then is the I like on the outside of seven tenths? Yes. Seven okay. tenths is B. In other words, this B right here, that's yeah. that co it's the coefficient of the I is what it is. Okay. And the A is whatever the real number is. All right, what else you got? Um, we have another one of the dividing complex numbers. Okay. Again, so, um, they're really just what, you know how you would say you would rationalize 1 over square root of 2? Well, what I call this is realifying, realifying the fraction. So what, what is it? So 3 minus i divided by 5 plus 2i. Okay, what do I need to do? Um, so you'd have to multiply by 5 plus 2i? The conjugate. Yeah. That's not the conjugate. The conjugate is 5 minus 2i. Whatever this sign is, your conjugate is the opposite. Okay. Now, is that all I have to do is multiply the bottom by that? And the top. Okay. And again, we're going to do it in the bottom because we want to get rid of the I's. And this will always get rid of the I's. Yep. Boil it, knowing that your two middle terms are going to go away. So the only term you really have is the first and the last. Okay. So it's really easy to foil these when you're foiling them with the conjugate. You don't need to do the O and the I of FOIL. Just the F and the L. What number is that? What number? Yeah, 25 minus 4I squared. Remember that I squareds are always converted to real numbers. You never leave yeah. an I squared layer like that. What's 4i so, squared equal to? Positive 4. Well, it's equal to negative 4, but we're subtracting a negative, so this whole thing becomes 29. Yeah. And we have realified the denominator. What's the numerator become? 15 um, minus 6i. Um, minus 5i um, plus 2i squared. Simplify. Um, so it'd be 13 um, minus 11i over 29. And put it in A plus BI format. Now, this might be perfectly acceptable for you. I don't know. Okay. I'm just. I think she does want it. Step in case you ever have to do it. I think she does want it in A plus B format. Okay. So. Okay. So 13 divided by 29 plus oh my, minus 11 divided by 29 I. And one reason to do that is, even though we might not be able to simplify it in that form, we could potentially simplify it in this form. Not in this case, but there certainly are cases where we would be able to do that. So yeah. that's another reason for putting it into A plus BI format. Okay. Have you had problems like this?
Um, yeah. Know how to do them? Um, I'm not that good with them. Okay, it's actually pretty simple. Let me go through it. Okay. I equals square root of the negative one. I squared equals negative one. I cubed equals minus I. And I to the fourth equals one. Then it repeats. I to the fifth equals I. I to the sixth equals minus one. I to the seventh equals minus I. And I to the eighth equals one. So if I said, what is I to the twelfth? It'd be one. Okay. If I said, what is I to the fourteenth? Minus one. What you do is divide that by four, whatever your remainder is. My, my mistake, you did it exactly right. <laughs> I'm looking at all these I's and ones. Uh, it's confusing. Uh, yeah. so, so what would I to the 501 power be? Um... It would be I. Correct. And you will generally find a problem like that at least once, even on an ACT or an SAT test. Yep. They like these problems where it goes in cycles. Uh, in other words, the i to the fourth is equal i to the eighth is equal i to the twelfth. So it's all you do is you divide that by four and you take your remainder and that's the i you're talking about. All right. Um, what else do we have? Um, so you have to. It's finding the discriminant value and determining the nature of the roots. Okay. So, 3x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. Do you know the quadratic formula by heart? No. Well, let me help you, uh, teach you a way to remember Notice what the vertex of a parabola is. Remember, minus b over 2a? Yeah. Okay. The discriminant has its own name. The discriminant is actually b squared minus 4ac. Okay. Now, the reason it has its own name and is worth looking at all on its own is because it tells you what kind of solutions you're going to have. It tells you whether you're going to have real or complex. Everything's based on whether this discriminant is negative, positive, or zero. Obviously, if it's negative, we're going to be taking the square root of negative numbers and we're going to have complex answers. So if the discriminant is less than zero, then you have two complex answers. A moment, somehow. It took me up. If the discriminant is greater than zero, 
Then you're going to be taking the square root of a positive number. That's going to give you two real answers. And if the discriminant is exactly equal to zero, well, then the only thing you have is minus b over 2a. It's only one answer, and it's real. You only get complex if you take square root of a negative number. So b over 2a has to be real. So for this formula, for this uh, equation you gave me here, tell me what the discriminant is. Um, so would we plug in the b squared minus 4ac? That is the discriminant. Yeah, so whatever b is, plug it in, and whatever a and c are, plug it in. Okay, so... All right, um, b squared. So 5 squared. Um, 5 squared subtract 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 25 minus 48. It's all so the information equal. you need. So what's the answer? Um, we don't really care what that number is. We just care whether it's Greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero? Okay. Less than so, zero, so there are two complex solutions to that equation. Which means there's no real solutions. It also means this parabola would not cross the x-axis. It might look something like that. In other words, if you don't, the only time you cross the x-axis with a parabola is if you have real solutions. You've got to have real solutions. If you get exactly one solution, then it touches the x-axis in one spot only. And if you get two real solutions, then it's going to cross the x-axis in two spots, and there's your two solutions. Okay. And so it was, it was too complex. Uh huh. But so then, what would the the roots, the type of roots, be? I'm confused. Too complex. In other words, 25 minus 48. Remember, we're not taking the square root of that. We're just determining what b squared minus 4ac is. And in this case, it's negative. And if it's negative, it means you have two complex solutions, always. If it would have been positive, we would have had two real solutions. And if it would have been exactly equal to zero, we would have had exactly one real solution. Let's do another one. You'll catch on. All right. 2x squared. Are you ready? Not quite. Hold on. Go ahead. 2x squared plus x minus 8 is equal to 0. What's the formula for the discriminant? Um, so it would be... Well, first the general formula. Uh, uh -oh. I want you to memorize um, your quadratic formula also. b squared... Minus 4 multiplied by A multiplied by C. Uh -huh. Okay. See, if, once you learn to work with the discriminant on its own like this, it's going to make memorizing the quadratic formula that much easier. You can see why. Because yeah. it's minus B plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2A. So what is that in this case? What is b squared minus 4ac? Would it be 1 squared minus 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by negative 8, which is equal to 1 minus, minus or plus 56? 
64. 4 times 64. 8, 8, 8 times 8, 64. And we've got a minus sign and a minus sign. Whenever I'm doing the discriminant, I, I kind of have a peculiar way of doing it. I always do those as my second step. Not counting that subtraction sign. Because it's always b squared minus. So you're always doing subtraction. And it's real easy to get confused here when you have a minus sign here and a minus sign there. Uh, very easy. For one thing, it'd be easy to just do both of them subtraction. And they're not. This one is a negative sign. So I always multiply the 4 times the A times the C first. Then I'm not going to make a mistake because that is minus 64, which means it's now 1 plus 64. The answer is 65. We didn't really care what the number was. Once we determined it was positive, what kind of solutions do we have? Um, it would be too real. Uh-huh. Because we're going to take the square root of 65 when we solve this thing. And everything else is a real number. The square root of 65 is also. So we're going to have plus square root of 65 and minus the square root of 65. That's where we get our second answer. The minus part of it. Okay. What else? Um. We have some polydoku puzzles. Some what? Polydoku. Don't know what those are. Is it something you can explain? Yeah. Okay. So. In parentheses, 6x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 5, parentheses, and then divided by 3x minus 1. Okay. Do you know how to do the long division on these? Well, so you're supposed to put it into like um, like a square type puzzle thing. Well, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know that method, but I certainly know long division which is probably easier. Um, Let me show you actually, could we... division and maybe you can match it up with your puzzle. Okay. okay. First of all, I'm going to do long division just like I would do any long division. Like that. Okay. Now, the first step of doing long division is to divide 3x into 6x cubed. Well, that gives you 2x squared. Okay? Yep. Second step is to multiply that 2x squared by both terms, giving you 6x cubed minus 2x squared. Now you do just like long division. You subtract. Well, those cancel one another out. X squared minus a minus 2X is... This was squared. X squared minus a minus 2X squared is 3X squared. Bring down the next term, just like long division, and repeat everything. So 3x goes into 3x squared, x time. Multiply the x by both terms. Subtract. Minus 4x, that's minus 3x. Bring down the next term. Do it again. 
minus 3, excuse me, minus 1, minus 3x plus 1, this becomes minus 6 is your remainder. In other words, 3x minus 1 is not a factor of that. You can divide it into it, but it's, it's going to give you a remainder. And if you get a remainder, it's anything but 0, it means that's not a factor. In other words, if I could factor that cubic, that's not going to be one of the factors. Okay? Now, is this anything like your puzzle was? Did we um, yeah. Okay, pretty much the same or not? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Just... I, don't, I don't think you want to spend the time explaining your puzzle to me if you get how to do it based on this. Yeah. So my exact answer is actually the following, just so you understand. 2x squared plus x minus 1, and then I do my remainder like this, minus 6 divided by my divisor. So that is the exact answer. I don't need to use the letter R to represent remainder. The answer is this quadratic minus 6 over 3x minus 1. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so this one is just like a word problem. Okay. So write a polynomial equation for a graph that passes through the point 1 and 56. And then, um, and has three x-intercepts. Okay. Minus 3 and 0. And then 2 and 0. Okay, hold on. So minus three. So it's in like per, in parentheses now minus what's three. Third, what's the third one? Um, two and oh five and zero. Okay. So it goes through that point. The x coordinate being one, y coordinate being fifty six, and it's got these three zeros. What factors do these three zeros suggest? Um, I gave you the factor. Let's say I gave you a factor x minus 7. What is the 0? Would it be 1? 7. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So if I give you a 0 of 2, what is the factor? Um, minus 2? x minus 2. When I ask for a factor, I need an x. What's the factor for the 0 of minus 3? x plus 3. And the factor for the 1 for 5? x minus 5. Okay. So I know those are my three factors that create this polynomial. But I also know that this point has to be on it. So there can be a constant in front of that also. But just be, we're not going to do that yet. Let's first of all multiply these three things together. I'm just confused. Where'd you get the x minus 7? That's just an example I was giving you to show you uh, okay. is all we're doing is thinking backwards. Yeah. In other words, if I told you there was a factor of x minus 7, that would mean that the 0 was x equals 7. So if they're going to give us the 0 of x equals 7, then I can work backwards to figure out that the factor had to be x minus 7. But that was just my example to try to get you to understand. How to get okay, yeah. factors. Now, multiply them together, and I'm going to suggest multiplying these two first. All right. 
What do you get? And I'm, multiply. I'm putting one in, correct? What's that? I'm putting one. Not yet. But... Um, uh, let me think for a moment whether it makes sense to do that. Um, it asks you for the polynomial, right? In other words, it wants you to multiply it out and give it a cubic, give it a cube, and yeah. a cubic as an answer. Well, then let's get a cubic, and then I'm going to show you a little extra step here. And I'd rather wait till we multiply it together before you substitute your 1 and your 56. Okay? So multiply these two together. X minus 2 times X minus 5. X plus 10. No. Foil it. No. Oh, okay. Um, X squared um, minus 5X. And then minus 2x gives you minus 7x. Okay, what's the number? Um, plus 10. Okay. Now multiply this binomial times this trinomial. And the um, way you do that, you can't use FOIL. But you just can start from the left and take every term and multiply it by every other term. So multiply that x by all three terms, and then go back and multiply the plus 3 by all three terms. That's the way you do so it. So x cubed minus 7x squared plus 10x um, plus 3x squared minus 21x um, plus 30. Good. Now, we know, let me simplify that. Let's see, we got a total of minus 4x squared. We got a total of minus 11x. And we only have one number. Now, we know that's equal to zero. Okay, because they gave us the zeros. So I know that that is equal to zero. The problem is, is that it doesn't fit this point here. If I graph that function, it doesn't go through those two points. But here's what I'm, I can multiply that polynomial by any constant I want. And it's still going to work, notice. In other words, see what I've got at the very bottom? Divide both sides by A, and you still have that polynomial equal to zero. But because I'm multiplying it by A, and they tell me that whenever X is 1, Y is 56, now go in and substitute 1 for X, and y, 56, and we'll solve for a. That's the secret to these problems. Is you get your cubic, put an a in front of it, always, and then see if a is something other than 1. Well, if I substitute 1 for x here, I got 1 minus 4, that's minus 3, minus 14, plus 16. So 16a equals, was it 56 or 156? Must have been 56. So a is, no, must have been 156. Ah, what was it, 156 or 56? Um, here, I have it right here, I have it right <laughs> I had it written. It erased itself. There. It's 1 and 56. Okay. So I've got everything correct here. So A is going to be, so I can divide each one of these by 4. So that's four. That's 7 halves. I can actually divide it, each one by 8. So A is 7 halves, 
And now our equation is that. Now you would want to multiply that out, distribute it, but that's our equation. It's 7 halves x cubed minus 14x squared minus 77x over 2 plus 105. That is our function. Now, if you gave me this function and said find the zeros, it would not be an easy process, but I would find the 2, 5, and whatever the other one was. Um, negative 3. 3. I think negative 3. The factor was x plus 3, which means the 0 had to be negative 3. Okay. Now, this function that I've written down here has the same zeros as this function. But they're different functions. For example, let me see if I can draw this so you understand it here. That function has three zeros, correct? Yeah. And that function, I could say that that is y equals some cubic. Okay, that's what cubics do, is they look like that. Well, what if I drew this thing like this? The same zeros, right? But a totally different function. This function would be like, like this one. It's a subtle distinction, but one that's worth understanding. That two different functions that are merely a multiplier apart the only difference between the two functions that we came up with was this a. I was multiplying it by a constant, which you can always do. That's a vertical stretch factor. That's what that does, is a vertical stretch factor over my flatter one. But I get the same zeros. So multiplying the entire function, this thing right here, by a constant doesn't change my zeros at all leaves me with the same zeros, but does give me a different function. The y I get that is the answer is 7 halves x cubed minus 14x and so forth. It's not what I got when I multiplied these three factors together. They both have the same zeros, but they're not going to be the same function. Okay. Okay. They could have started you out with a little bit easier one where they don't give you that fourth point. In other words, yeah. they could have just given you three zeros and said write a polynomial that has those three zeros. And then I would have just had to multiply those three things together. I would have gotten this. That would have been my answer. But then when they put the extra restriction that it has to go through one and 56, well, that is not the case here. If I substitute 1 for x, y will not be 56, unless I'm multiplying the whole thing by 7 halves, which was what a came out to be. This is a, this is a tough part here. This is probably one of the toughest things you've done in math. Is yeah. This problem specifically. Notice that before I let you go here, uh, if they would have said, give me a function whose constant is 60. Well, when I came up with the function, I got a constant of 30, right? Yeah. 
So A would have to be 2. Yeah. And then I would have a constant of 60. All right. Lachlan, you have a good rest of your evening. I'll let you go. Any okay. last questions or anything? Um, no, I think I'm all right. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.